Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to Geek Fruit Retcon, where we travel back in time to a previous episode from our inglorious history on the Geek Fruit Podcast. Happy listening, you nerds. Welcome to the Geek Food Podcast with me, Tejas, and Jishnu. That's me. Hi, Jishnu. Hello. Welcome to another cool episode. Well, thank you for that welcome. I, I would have welcomed you in an even cooler way because the stuff that we're going to talk about, the shows particularly that we're going to talk about, have really cool intro sequences and make you want to feel mm-hmm. like, wow, we're part of a new world of stuff. They have like epic music. They all, yeah, and both of these shows, and we're going to, without being too cryptic about it, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, these, it's not like it's in the description of this What like if a, some people just like blindly trust us And just go like <laughs> I'm gonna press play <laughs> It doesn't matter It doesn't matter Fools On Savan they're just like You know Fools. what We just press play It's all good Fool of a took Yeah fool of a took So um, <clears throat> So we're gonna go t- Today's episode is about game shows And yeah. it's, a, it's just It just happens to be another episode uh, Another topic That seems to be completely different for Two generations One of the kids who grew up in the 90s and the kids who grew up in the in the in the noughties, in the as aughts. They, and they call them the noughties or the aughts, I guess, right? The aughties. Post two thousand, basically. Yeah, Post Y two K. Yeah. So these mil, uh, millennials are we millennials? I'm we? Not, yeah. No, hell no. We're not, right? We're born in eighty nine. So basically, anybody who's who's born, oh, no, I'm saying, uh, is millennials the people who are born yeah, in the millennium after or the millennium, least, or uh, or who grew up in it? Uh, See, one there or the you other. Go. But that's either way, it's not us. Oh, it's not us. Is it's it? not us. So what are we? Generation we're, we're, X. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> we're not that the, the baby boomers. That. That's why. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing before. Yeah. And that's I before think that, us. That's, that's Generation that's X. Us. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so here's what I've just. I mean, we did a little research about these shows. Mm-hmm. We're specifically talking about yeah. the Crystal Maze, which is a very, very famous BBC mm-hmm. uh, Channel Four show, and the other show was on uh, a channel I didn't watch too much of, but of course I'm fairly well acquainted with Nickelodeon mm-hmm. and uh, their work on. Legends of the Hidden Temple. So you didn't get Nickelodeon? No, or you just, I mean, by choice no, you I, chose I got Nickelodeon. Else. I just okay. didn't get Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> it was too highbrow for you? No, it no. was just, I mean, um, I, don't, I don't know what. I think I was just a Cartoon Network fanboy. And it was almost oh. like the difference that you have between DC and Marvel. You know, like sometimes. But I was just like, I was just more into into animation and stuff like that. So, okay, so you got, rather you were. I, I you was, were, had uh, the access to the channel. You had yes. access to both channels. Mm-hmm. Did you have access to both channels from day one? I mean, so I, I, like I said, I keep mentioning this. So I didn't grow up in India. I grew up in mm-hmm. Dubai. And over there, like yesterday, somebody was asking me, where did you watch the Crystal Maze? What channel used to come on? Like, and mm-hmm. again, so I was like, channel 33. <laughs> and like, people like, what? And every time uh, I say channel, you have to ask anybody from plus. Dubai, stop ask anybody plus. from Dubai, channel 33 was like one of the biggest, I mean, if, if it was the first channel that brought in like syndicated content, which was really like, you know, either like, you know, basically Western content. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was such a great channel because it didn't have to stick to the, to the programming that came from a singular network. It got stuff like cartoons. It got little wonder. It had, it had a bunch small of things. Wonder. Small wonder. Sorry. I love that show. So it had With a bunch of things and, and it had, uh, and it also had Crystal Maze, which I was, where I watched as a kid. So did you have Cartoon Network as a dedicated channel and Nickelodeon as a dedicated channel? So then as time went by, so I, like I told you, grew up in a very weird time in this during the 90s mm-hmm. where again Dubai wasn't really sure what it was about and then as it became more and more of a tourist destination and you know became more of this you know cosmopolitan kind of society and obviously they brought in all the media and the networks and everything so then yeah after a while I used to start getting uh, we had a service provider called Orbit and this anybody who's from Dubai will know exactly what, Orbit and Showtime so Orbit and Showtime were the two major it's like uh, the equivalent of your Dish TV or your hmm. you know or, or, or whatever it star. is a star or, yeah. or, or Tata Sky or whatever right. it is. Yeah. And so, yeah, so they had a bunch of channels, like including the Fun Channel. Now, the Fun Channel was another channel, which is not Disney or DC or anything like that. I don't know who it belongs to, but it had uh, it had Batman the Animated Series, Superman, that's, hmm. where, I, that's where I watched all of it growing okay. up. So it's quite interesting. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so coming back, so I think I always favored Crystal Maze because I just saw it more. And, uh, and Nickelodeon did come to us a little later on, but I didn't get into it because, you know, I was already like, oh, Fun Channel and Disney Channel hmm. and, you know, all that stuff. This is before Disney XD came because, about. Because what, yeah. what happened for us, at least uh, as best I can recall in India, like we didn't get Nickelodeon at least until 
the late 90s. Oh, yeah? Everything, yeah, prior, yeah, to that, 90s, everything yeah, yeah. prior to that was Cartoon Network. And Star Plus. Star Plus and Cartoon Network. And that was, this is the time Star Plus and we got Star Plus as well. Star Plus was English. It was yeah, English. It was English at the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. Like my yeah, my earliest that. memory of Star Plus is like watching Remington Steel and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, totally. And Even my so, mother, yeah, was a huge fan of Pierce And I think, I think Crystal Maze was on that. But basically what I'm getting at is that we had Cartoon Network and that was pretty much the only source for cartoons and Kids. things of that. Kids shows of yeah. that is that nature. Yeah, um, but I, and if then, I don't, if I can recall correctly, I don't think Cartoon Network ever had any live action kind of stuff. Right? No, it was no. only animation. Mm, yeah, it was called def- the Cartoon Network. Yeah, it didn't have live action at least until like the two thousands. Notable mention though, the only mm-hmm. game show that was on that was the All Star Laugh Olympics, which was <laughs> that the, rings a bell. It was all the Hanna Barbera cartoons basically came together in this one crossover event style thing. It was like almost like the wacky races. Oh, was that live action? It was all like, no, oh, it was I cartoon. was just like, okay. it was a cartoon game show as in like where they oh, would take part right. in silly oh, nice. Olympic games. Yeah, oh, that was cool. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I remember that. That was fun. That was always yeah, fun. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. Good fun, yeah. Um, but no, so Nickelodeon came by, came by, Nickelodeon became a thing in yeah. India um, in the early 2000s, late 90s, whatever it was. And that There's was a lot of some shows that you'd watch on Nickelodeon. Just Well, I mentioned before, Keenan and Kel. Keenan and Kel. My, has my heart and soul forever. Yeah. Uh, there was all that, which was back to back with Keenan and Kel. And that was okay. sort of like a, the kids version of SNL, essentially. Just a sketch comedy show with a rotating cast. And a lot of those guys, including Keenan Thompson from Keenan and Kel, who's yeah. also on all that, is and now on SNL. what are they doing with their lives now? Oh, they're on SNL. Well, he's on SNL. He's um, on SNL right now? Keenan Thompson, yeah, yeah. Who is he? He is. Uh, he's a pretty. He's a big guy. Uh, African American, sh- average height. Oh yeah, um, wait. Is he this? He's he's like right now on the cast of us now. I'm pretty sure because I know yeah. most of them. I yeah, think, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm almost positive. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, it's it's hilarious to like Google what happened to Kel. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Oh, it's what so happened they, to Kel? The, well, that's the question. Nobody knows. No, nobody really knows. I mean, like he he pops up every now and again, and when like he's, I've seen like two or three interviews with the guy, sort of like being uh, bombarded with questions about Keenan and Kel and why aren't you guys like BFFs anymore? Because you guys were such a great team. And right. It was basically a duo that like like split Drake, up, like Drake and Josh, exactly like Drake and Josh, okay. who are also on all that. Okay, who else came from all that? So and then Keenan they, and Kel was before Drake and Josh. Uh, I think so because they were older okay, so cool. I want to say right. so but yeah so Drake and Josh had their own show Drake and Josh also went on all that Amanda Bynes if you, you know who that is yeah of course yeah, Amanda so Bynes. she was on that oh, as well she's the man <laughs> yeah that's the movie she was in, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah, so that so that was so that was one of the many shows and of course Legends of the Hidden Temple um was arguably one of the biggest fan favorites. That, think, yeah, Legends of, Hidden Temple, Legends of Hidden Temple and yeah. Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold, yeah, of course. Those two shows, arguably, I think, were ev- on everybody's top list. That yeah. and the Rugrats. Rugrats, um, yeah, Which course. you've never seen, you said, right? I mean, I, I, again, like it's <clears throat> it's almost impossible to avoid knowing them because they're sure. so strong in the zeitgeist of pop seen, culture and stuff. You've seen you know? uh, the Wild Thornberries? Uh, yeah, again, I'm completely aware of it. Sure. Then yeah. really watch it, watch it. I guess it's like watching... Like random episodes now and then of like SpongeBob and stuff, so it's like yeah, that. Yeah, that's where that's where we first. So, so, so the big the big shows on Nickelodeon, which I did see, obviously Legends of the Hidden Temple is almost unavoidable. Um, SpongeBob, of course. Mm-hmm. I guess a little bit of Hey Arnold and Cat Dog and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, so those those are important. I actually watch Nickelodeon a lot more now <laughs> because I told you like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is now owned by Nickelodeon, right? And they have a great like version of that show. Which I haven't is, seen which that one yet. It's really yeah, yeah. good. Is it a gritty reimagining? It's not a. Uh, it's not, a, it's, <laughs> it's not a, gritty. It's a, just but a little I, bit darker color tone. So right? funny, but it is. It it's, really is. It's more contrast and like it really is. desaturated. A it's little so bit. funny <laughs> that we've been talking. We spoke about like Pop of Girls. Yeah. Which had just you know come back and everything, and you know it's not as dark or anything, but they they've gone to like different yeah. subsections it's, of things which of are course, not you absolutely. know things that you yeah, think yeah. about it as as a younger person, but similarly like Pop of Girls is back. We were talking about Cartoon Network bringing back their slate of like you know mm-hmm. old cartoons. So uh, this is what's happening, and why we're even talking about Hidden uh, Hidden Temple is because it's coming back. Mm-hmm. But it's not coming back as the show. Yeah, it's not a TV show it's anymore. It's coming back as a live action TV, TV movie. movie. And check it. Okay, this is what I heard. So why it's coming back is because one of the interns at Nickelodeon suggested it, saying that, hey, you know what would be great is that if you got all these old school televisions to come back. And for that intern, it's probably like he must be a millennial. And he must have been like, oh, you know what? We should bring back some old stuff. And for all of us, it's like still there. It's still like a real thing that happened. So he's like, yeah, but bring back all that old shit, you know, and just do (laughs) it again. But yeah, so that's, that's probably why it's back. Um, and yeah man Two amazing shows Here's the other thing I want to point out Actually maybe you should Do this after the break <laughs> It's actually a fairly Bigger point Well then Yeah So Brace, let's take, let's brace take yourself For the point For the point, point Wait break. for it 
We'll point be back break? after this break. Is it a point break? It's a point break. Hey, point break. Hey guys, this is Malika Singhania, co-founder of the blog Stylogram, where we cover trends, fashion forecasts, celebrity style, tips and tricks, and lots more cool stuff. So tune in every Thursday to the Stylogram podcast, your weekly style telegram, giving you the latest fashion and beauty stories that are relevant to you. You can also subscribe to our show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Audio Boom, or any other local podcast app. See you soon. Hello again. Yeah, have you seen Point Break? Hello, hello. Um, the old no, one. No, actually, I haven't seen Point Break. Point Break, though. I'm aware of it. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen the ad like a billion times. And then they remade it. I didn't see the remake. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Should yeah. I? Do you recommend? I've not seen it either. There's a laundry list of things I need to watch. You, oh, you should, should Point watch, Break be oh, on no, that no. list? You should watch Point Break, like the first Point Break. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <sighs> It's all cool stuff, so much man. Stuff to it's watch, cops man. and serfs and <laughs> like Ga- Game of Thrones just came out. This first the season opened last night. Yeah, Have yeah. you seen it yet? Well, not last night, just now. Well, yeah. well, the season just came back. Recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like yeah. it just started up again. Yeah, like yesterday. I'm not. I'm not seeing it. I still yet. haven't seen it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like it's just. I will. I will. So much to watch. Yeah, that's too much to watch. That's a, <laughs> it's I mean, so much I, to watch. I won't ever call it a problem of being a nerd. Yeah, like, but yeah. like, but it such, is a little. There's so many. Let's put it this way. There's so many good things to watch out yeah. there. It's just like, oh, where do I even start? We're well, so more than a little spoiled. Sometimes for I just like go on Netflix and just like yeah. pick. Like, so now I've started watching this F F for family. F for family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's basically one of my favorite comedians, Bill Burr. Mm. Uh, it's his animated show. It's like Louis, but set in the seventies and animated, <laughs> and a great cast. Huh? So Justin Long is there, uh, Sam Rockwell is there, Laura oh, wow. Dern, who's going to be oh. in Star Wars Eight. Yeah, is so there. excited for that. Yeah. So yeah. it's so yeah, it's a great show, and I'm just like, okay, let me just watch this now because that's the point. Now yeah. it's just like, ah, let's just watch anything I, else I apart of, from I, the things that I likewise, need to watch. I, I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy uh, having that ability to go on Netflix and literally just blindly pick something, mm. just as to sort of like. Let myself know that I'm yeah. no because sometimes it feels a little bit like I'm going down a list. Like, yeah, I have to check off some shows. Just and I that's, mean, it's fun. The shows are great, and yeah. doing research on it is all kinds of fun. But at the same time, a small part of me is like, "This is for work." You know what I mean? Like, I need to actually see this because I need yeah. to have no, said I get, I've done that. Yeah, so and I, I like think this is a good reason randomly. for why also the argument is true that mm-hmm. true television style programming will never die. Because people never know what to watch by themselves. People are sheep, and if you feed them, they will eat. <laughs> oh my god! I swear, you know, because like, put that on a t-shirt. Because, because, because on 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 Netflix also, you uh, you assume you have the 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 perception of choices given the, the, to you, the, the, but they are slightly, you know. Pushing things towards you based of on course. what you watched, yeah. obviously. It's called, and that's it's called recommended for you. Yeah, it's yeah. called recommended. It's just yeah. no longer called for you. It's just yeah. slapped a new name on it, but yeah. it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. So coming okay. back, and this, anyway. is a, this is a bad segue, but yeah. you know, this is probably you a, why... You had a big point that you were going to break. We'll get to. But Uh-oh. this is what, what I really loved about, uh, about Crystal Maze and Human Legends is that, you know, you could watch any episode anytime. And, you know, it wouldn't matter that you're following a storyline or anything like that. It was great because you could, especially for for first two seasons, actually, no, all series of, of Crystal Maze. Most watch, game shows in general. Yeah, just all amazing that. Shows. I think that's why game shows are such a great thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've noticed is that game shows don't exist anymore in the same capacity because they were replaced after to the 2000s by reality shows. Yep. And reality television has ruined it because you yeah. have to follow stuff now. Yeah. And it's just like, oh gosh, there's another thing you have to follow right. and download. Absolutely. Especially, I think... Like Idol, I guess, kind of changed the the game. You would say, which mean? is the first major reality show that kind of changed the Survivor. Maybe Survivor. Maybe Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I guess also with Pop yeah. Idol. But these these shows have basically replaced the game show format, where it was more about prizes, were like cool prizes that would give. Like I, I would say they've replaced the physical game shows because at the moment the current the current game shows that skill? I skill. No, I think mental like. So like uh, Family know. Feud is still huge with Amazing. Steve Harvey. It's still love it's it. Massive. Yeah, Steve Harvey. I remember of watching. I remember watching uh, Mastercard with Family Fortune with Roshan Abbas. Yeah, of course. On Star Plus again. It's good point. When I was like six years old or That's whatever so that true. was. And uh, at the time when he was doing it for the you know the Indian and Southeast Asian version. Right. Um, I'm blanking on his name. Oh God, Al Borland. From okay. Home Improvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al. What's his name? I can't remember. I forget we'll, his name. We'll get his name. We'll get his name. He was doing it. And you know, so I mean, that show has oh, been yeah, around so she for did? twenty plus years. Well, family Fortune, you're saying? Yeah, Family Family Feud. It was called Family. Feud. Yeah, Family yeah. Feud is the is the one where uh, basically the the you get Regis, a who was it? Regis Philbin? No, no, no. Uh, was it, who was hosting it before him? And he used to basically kiss all the women on the show. Actually, wait, was on it the Regis? Mops. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if it might have been Regis. He would just go up to every. I mean, because Re- Regis started Millionaire. I'm not sure yeah, if he, he started was Family Feud. Yeah, but. 
either which way. So I mean, yeah. So that so those kind of shows still are still around. Like there's um. Like who are you smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah, things like that. Than. Like all these like question based games. Obviously, Jeopardy is still big. Jeopardy is um, still huge. Alex Trebek, he's still there. He's still there. Yeah. D- Drew Carey is still hosting the um, um uh, what's oh, it? Geez, uh, Wheel of Fortune. Not no, Wheel, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, uh, Price is right. Price is right. He's yeah. Just, so before those, so Bob these kind of so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these kind of games where in which you just build one set and nothing really needs to move. Yeah. The people just get up out of the audience, stand still for like There's half just a lot of hype and, and answer a bunch it. of questions. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty low key in that way. Yeah. Legends, Global Guts, um, Tikashi's Castle, um, yeah. you know these those kind of American those kind of Ninja shows, Warrior, which yeah. is my new favorite show. These kind of these kind of shows yeah. require a lot of manpower and a lot of like day to day operations to like get these things set yeah, up and change the set, reset the set, change re- new ones, change, yeah. you know, develop a new theme for a different episode, yeah. things yeah. like that. So there's a whole lot of time and f- energy put so, into that which I feel like so I'm, have I'm those guessing died? have those died now what do you think I feel like they have I mean like the, there, are, guess, there, um, there are a handful of shows like so I'll tell you one show that I would watch a lot um, for for no other reason other than lack of options yeah. was Wipeout Wipeout is so, hilarious right fun fun and random different story different franchises they have different ones yeah, yeah. like in India and right, in but the they're UK, all so. but they're all basically the same concept yeah, right so basically concept. it's simple stupid viewing it's the same thing as like Jackass with like the Jackass yeah. guys it's the exact same thing just controlled yeah and, and, it's, and willingly done and yeah. not it's it's not like snakes it's, biting it's your like a, like a genitalia. comedy comedy yeah. show. Yeah, it's, it's more comedic. Yeah. You're laughing at the Rather guy, but adventure. You yeah, also, like, but you also you don't feel too bad because you know they're not really hurt because they're like tons of padding and all this and kind of water stuff. and, and water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so uh, just really quick aside, totally random. Um, I would watch Wipeout when I was working at a TV station back in the states. Um, instead was, of working, <laughs> instead of well, so I was. Was this, this your job? This was, a, this was a summer job that I had. Okay, I was um, an assistant director at this. Uh, TV station for the summer duration for these shows. Primarily, ninety percent of the shows that we had, to, it was uh, you know I was taking care of man managing. Ninety percent of these shows were cable access televangelists. Ah, huh, correct. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's as low key as it gets. It like you've seen uh, Zach, you've seen stuff. Zach Galifianakis's Between Two Phones. Yeah, yeah. You've seen like Stephen Colbert's like. Parody of yeah, like yeah, some yeah. Minnesotan town, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, down to the T with the fake rubber that's, plants. That's a real thing. It's yeah. totally the real yeah. thing. And there was just every every other day there'd be some random old pastor like, that would come in and like yeah. preach the Bible and stuff. And so I would just zone out because I didn't want to. <laughs> would listen they have to any like that. a like a tele shopping network like number call for donations yes, or something like that? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, they would yeah. give like his personal cell phone number out what? and be like, "Yo, call take, me." Would he take calls on the show? Uh, I've seen no, some people do they that. They did though. not have. We didn't have the technology to do that. This was yeah. so low key. But either which way, so like uh, that's what you know be going on live, mm-hmm. right? All I do is just like have three cameras to like switch between and just basically sit there in the in the control room, press A, B, or C, and then on the second screen next to me because we had to um, you know verify that the cable signal was working. Right. <laughs> I could either I could either watch what I was broadcasting out with like a five second delay, or. I could switch it to one of the five channels available to us, which had Wipeout. <laughs> Wipeout is great. So I just watch Wipeout Such on great silent. Random while viewing. one guy sitting in the room next to me, like preaching about like televangelism stuff, I'm watching a really morbidly obese person with wow. like a whole bunch of like rubber padding falling <laughs> in slow motion into a giant swimming pool. But watching it on on silent is bad because like that's fifty percent of the shows. Those commentators just like this is true. Uh, you know, just taking their case. But right? I mean, it's pretty interesting if the commentating to Wipeout is you know. The tell, yeah, the it's Bible. a bit funnier. It's yeah. a little wow. bizarre. So that some of them might even have like he's <clears throat> walking on water and this guy's like falling into water. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only one I could pull out so, yeah. from the. Anyway, but yeah, man, you know, actually, so just coming back, so why yeah. even like even why wipeout is actually really funny is because of those commentators. Mm-hmm. But I think like so in Crystal Maze particularly, like Richard O'Brien was so good at belittling like the contestants, yeah. like in a in a very chill way, and you know. I, I think about it very often. It's just that he was so much a part of why that show was a super hit, apart from the concept itself. But that guy really knew how to, yeah. you know, like he really knew how to kind of hold the thing together and keep it light at the same time, keep yeah. it really like because sardonic. Because if, you, and, cause you, if know, you think about it, like yeah. the actual... Uh, the the what the contestants do like they don't have any script they don't really have to speak much right? they're idiots because all these yeah because the only time the contestants <laughs> are actually addressing the camera or are addressing Richard O'Brien is when he asks them at the top of the show hey so what's your name oh where are you from they what don't do you speak do? at all yeah they basically this or like, or like there's a team leader this, yeah there's a team leader right yeah. so he's like Captain hey my name is John and I'm an uh, 
engineer or whatever and here's my team that's so and so such and such and blah 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 yeah. she's like cool let's go and let's do the thing so for the rest of the show the contestants are actually just like running around like headless chickens and yelling frantically like no you have 5 seconds left yeah, like, you're an idiot you're going to get locked in yeah, and just like yeah. gibberish the, or, or, and all or that when stuff. They, they ask like so who's going to do the next round it's like uh Oh, oh well, uh, I think, I think uh, it's gonna be. Uh, I think it's gonna be Nick. It's gonna be Molly. Yeah, uh, Molly's gonna do it. And it's like, come on, Molly, you've got a minute thirty left on the clock. I can't do it. I can't I do it. I, I'm trying to make his head. I can't find out where the piece is of the puzzle. Yeah, it's right in front of you. What just, are you doing? Just, get, just, just come back, man. Just come back, Mary. I've got five seconds. Back. Is it five <laughs> seconds? Is it four? I just come back. Now. You're not gonna get it. Just come two? back. Is it one? Ah, you're screaming at me. Oh no, I'm locked in the door. That is literally every single challenge. So if he was not there <laughs> yeah. to like blow his harmonica and talk to Mumsy. And sometimes Mumsy dude. If he was not there, the show would have like zero narrative flow because so they're true. just yelling, you know, complete nonsense at each other. So paying no attention to like carrying on a show. Talk about Mumsy. Let's look. Uh, what the hell was Mumsy? Okay, you know what? Mumsy reminds me so much of the penguin's mother from Gotham. Yeah, yeah, very it's true. It's the exact same character. She's the same like kind Eastern, of character. Eastern European old bag lady, yeah. basically, right? Uh, what was she? She was a clairvoyant, yeah? Yeah, something. exactly. So, like, yeah. she's basically like this mystic, yeah. the oracle. And she was in the medieval zone for, yes. the, for, the, for the most for the longest time. For the first yeah, two yeah, seasons, yeah, yeah, yeah she was. How many, seasons were, there? How many seasons were there? There was, like, a six-year run. There were six seasons, out of which, the four, 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 uh, six series, first four series were Richard O'Brien. Yeah. And then the other guy, Edward Tudor Paul, yeah. 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 Um, Nobody watches those. Yeah, <laughs> we don't talk about that. But um, no, yeah. So Mumsy functioned as some sort of like holding ground of like uh, not a holding ground, basically uh, some sort of like grounding uh, of um, some sort of continuity to this to sort of one one is continuity and uh, the other. So I was watching a random episode last night and like he starts off with like he's like. Ah, uh, yeah, I've got I've got such a bloody headache, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, why?" He's like, "Oh, because Mumsy, we were celebrating Mumsy's 39th birthday." And then when you go into, and then they change the, so one of the zones was changed, right? Yeah. Can't remember which one it was. Uh, but they changed one of the zones mm-hmm. to ah uh, the industrial zone. Mm-hmm. Basically, was there in the first two series, and then sure. they changed that to the uh, the ocean zone, oceanic yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the, right. Where they go to the SS Atlantis, and yes, they have yes, to yes. climb down those rope nets right, and all right, that right. stuff. So, um, which is actually a good change because, yeah. like, the industrial zone after a while was like meh. The live action version that's been built, which we'll get to later, has actually does not have the oceanic zone. It has the for safety reasons. Which is a pretty good thing, I'd, oh, okay, I'd say. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah people could yeah. drown. But you dude, worse genuinely... things have happened. I mean, like, worse things can, could Besides happen. Besides death. <laughs> no, I mean, like, in the sense that, you know, you have water parks. So True. So, how yeah, can yeah. you not have, like, an ocean? Plus, I mean, like, it's not a bad thing to put in the epitaph, like, died in the crystal maze. Yeah. That's, Crazy good. That's epic. Especially since, at the pretty end of the epic. show, they usually give, I beat the crystal maze. Right. It's like, yeah, yeah. So, it's like, I died in the crystal maze. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is funny, because the crystal maze is not really a maze at all, is it? It's really not. It's Especially when the guy is telling you exactly where to go and telling yeah. you exactly what you need to do to solve the puzzle. Yeah. It was such a simple concept, though. You know, like, uh, so apparently it's been inspired by this other show called Fort Boyage, uh, uh, like, or something like that, uh, or, or, or something like that. It, it was a French show, and they wanted to recreate the French show, but then the producer said, no, this is not exactly what, like, how we want to do it. And apparently, they busted out this, the concept for Crystal Maze in two days before wow. they had to pitch it. And then it happened. And, like, I, I guess this, the, you know, this, like, I'm just thinking about what is the main, like, Bits of like what are the main sequences of of Crystal Maze, and so it starts with the introduction. Mm-hmm. There's every thing starts in a zone, and then to get to, to enter the zone is mm-hmm. one like little bit of interim footage. Sure, it's like they have like either have to cross action on running robots, shots. Yeah, 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 action yeah, yeah, running yeah. shots, yeah. and then you get to the zone, and then you do like four games, and that's and it. And here's the thing to think about. All this, all these mon- not montages, but all these interim like you yeah. know, moving yeah, transition yeah, transitional yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. It was all with like a sort of CCTV kind of look, right? Yeah, Cameras yeah, yeah. like mounted Especially in the Especially the industrial <laughs> zone because it yeah, had yeah. that vibe. But this is like 20 years before the GoPro was invented. Yeah. So, just a, so, a here's, so here's the thing, right? The the maze has so much production value, so much detail built into like creating those sets and creating those worlds. They look, they have to look genuine, right? Because you're yeah. act, cause in essence, you're performing really stupid tasks. You're like <laughs> the puzzles you're doing and the physical challenges, like climb on this rope in the Aztec zone to get to the crystal. <laughs> yeah. It's a very simple thing. Well, if you it's seemingly if you, simple. I mean, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it is a, the, the construct of that design is yeah. very simple yeah. because you have to figure it out in 90 seconds how to solve it, right? That's true. So, all that the show has to sell you is the illusion that you are in this world, right? So there's a whole lot of time and money obviously spent in the production value of things. 250,000 pounds. So now, imagine if they made that stuff now, if they had to do it now, for one thing... GoPro's everywhere. GoPro's everywhere, (laughs) right? Like you put like couple karaoke has like 20 million views per 
per video yeah. and is it's that, just all GoPros. GoPros? Yeah, it's okay, cool. all GoPros. Right. It's like just four GoPros in a car and boom, 20 million views just like that. Yep. The celebrities have something to do with it. But, Probably. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but as far as the production value is concerned. Hey, we know, did a video in a car. Well, I did. <laughs> yeah, so you did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if they did that show now, I feel like they could do it so much bigger and better and invest even less time into with dealing with the, the, the capturing the cinematography of it unless they obviously wanted to try something new. But if they wanted to do the exact same show, as far as the the technical aspects of filming it are concerned, it will be so much easier for them. So much easier and so much better. Yeah, just yeah. like everyone's better at their jobs now than they were before. Yeah. Like you can even tell the difference between season uh, series one and series four. Mm-hmm. First of all, it's become it's become SD. So I don't know what they were shooting before that. <laughs> but it's like standard definition is now a thing. It's still four yeah. by three, but yeah, it's yeah. like... It's a, it's a, it's, it looks much cl- crisper. Like even you can tell even in Legends of the Hidden Temple, mm-hmm. it's like as you go yeah. through the first yeah, like yeah, yeah. four, four seasons, like the, uh, no, there were only three seasons. So by the third season, you can actually tell that there's, you know, the quality has gone up. Like everybody knows what they're doing. Even like Kirk Fogg, the guy mm-hmm. who's doing it, mm-hmm. he's so much better at yeah. his job than, you know, yeah, yeah. and it's funny that I, I uh, just speaking of hosts, these are two separate interviews, which I was reading before coming here. I mean, like uh, in research for this show. So uh, about for Richard O'Brien, he was like, you know, why he quit the show after the first series. He's like, you know, this is one of those shows I just did on a whim and I didn't realize it was going to get so famous. And then after a while, I decided that, wow, you know what? I'm going to get stuck doing this show like forever. You know, like I'm going to I'm going to be doing this forever. And I was getting movie offers to do and if I didn't quit I wouldn't have got those movies right. but really what did Richard O'Brien do after that so I'm glad you asked yes seamless transition so uh, he's actually he's been involved with some pretty interesting productions right? is he, so, is he like an executive producer of this uh, Crystal Maze which is happening or something like he, that he is very much so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. he's not so um, let's, let's actually just tell people about that because we've been yeah. alluding to it for a while yeah. so there is a live action Crystal Maze now that you can take part in. There's been one in Dubai, you said, for a while now, it's, right? It, okay, so it's not... Like it was a not... A, Crystal it, Maze Light? Yeah, yeah. Light. And yeah. it was like a kid's And was it version. official? It was called the Crystal Maze, yeah. It okay. was like all... Cool. Yeah, I saw... They must have had it like sure. licensed and stuff. So recently is uh, as far back, not uh, not too far back as uh, 2015, so just about a year, give or take, uh, ago, they started an Indiegogo campaign in England to build... A, last year, is it? Yeah, just, just last year. So they started an Indiegogo campaign to build a fully functional uh, set in the middle of London, one that was not meant for filming purposes, but one that was meant for public use. Basically, nice. you could pay and then be in the maze. And like I said, Oceanic is not included simply because it was getting yeah. complicated. So apparently, the size of it mm-hmm. was like, is, is two football pitches. Yeah. Yeah that's, yeah, that's what the size of the original Crystal Maze is supposed to be. Yeah, so. Oh, the original one. Yeah, the, okay. so that's so how I they built it. Yeah, so I don't know I don't, how big I, this one I is. I doubt this would be that big. Okay. But uh, what they did manage to do was raise... 185% of wow. what their target was. What was the target? I actually, let's, let's I figure that out. We, we can figure that. We yeah. can look that up. But it was it was an uh, incredible success as it deserved and deserves to be. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, and Richard O'Brien is a part of it. So basically, he's not there with Obviously, you, he's right? not going to be. So they, they have, they have somebody else who I believe is sort of playing a variant of his persona, somebody that's trying to be charismatic like that and quirky like the, and witty. the Jack Sparrow and, that he is. Essentially, yeah. essentially that. Um, so... You can, it's, I think, somewhere between 50 to 60 pounds. Uh, you go in a group. and 60 pounds. How much is can, that in? Uh, that's 6,000 rupees. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes 6,000 yeah. Yes. Yes. We can do maths. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, 6,000 so, rupees for per person? Yes. Per person. Wow. That's expensive. But it's for like or is two. Or it per team? I'm sure but it's for two hours. Okay. Because, the, I mean, the team sizes vary, right? Like you can go with X number of people or with Y number of people. Well, like, there's, yeah. a, there's like a limit. There's an upper and lower limit. Well, two I'm hours sure. is good because like technically <clears> the show is 45 minutes long. Right. So that's like, that's you could do the entire thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, so I mean, with so, editing, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can either, you know, go with a small group or you can, they have, you know, like corporate uh, bundles and all that stuff. Oh, so you can yes, go with, like I a see. big party and yeah. like, whatever. Then some schools can bring their kids. Exactly. They'll have a coupon <laughs> the, day. It's the Imagica like and yeah, Disneyland yeah, format. Yeah. 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 So, um, so it is a real thing and it's actually functional. It's been open for a few months now. Um, I don't know how long it's going to oh, be around Oh, it has for. been open. Oh, yeah. Is, are there any like videos and stuff of this? Not that I've seen. Oh, we should check it out. Okay, we, sh- we, we should definitely yeah, follow yeah. up on this. Wow, I'm um, interested in knowing how much was actually spent on on this thing, but I'm sure yeah. it was a lot, especially yeah. if they're doing. And so, what they have to reset every game. So only one team gets to go in at a time, I suppose. I would imagine, yeah, yeah. because like you have, you want to have the like you don't want to have the you know another team and another yeah. quest like going so, through because I mean you have to be guided by the guy. And he's yeah, be with you the whole time. It, so in Dubai, how it was is that it, there were multiple teams in at a time. Obviously, they would have a you know 
a limit to how many could actually be running around the crystal maze. Right. So what? But what they do is that they very smartly do. They would be four guides, sure. okay, and no charisma at all because I can't remember one of them. <laughs> uh, and and this is the way it functioned is that I told you there were no real crystals, yeah. uh, no Swarovski style like actual <laughs> yeah. you know golf ball crystals. <laughs> uh, but what they did have was uh, I mean, it was all digital, so they had sure. made everything digital. So it kind of removed the fun of it. But basically, it was all about when you reach the edge of the end of a, a challenge, you have to basically hit the the crystal button and then it would automatically appear on a screen that was outside and I, I think mumsy was as a part of the design really? i think so yeah there was not, a mumsy yeah i can remember oh, awesome. a digital version of it and how they did <clears throat> is that every team uh, would go into a zone which was not occupied by another team so they would uh, smartly do it so sure, that okay, everyone shifts into another yeah, yeah, zone yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was always being used and yeah. it was quite cool yeah. and yeah yeah so that and actually now that i think about it, this makes a lot of sense that the crystal maze was in dubai is because we had such few channels while growing up so it means all the kids who were watching who were in dubai at that point would have definitely watched crystal maze so that's i guess why it became so, such a popular thing uh, back home over there. So yeah, man. Oh, okay. So yeah. I I have the the site up right now just going to tell you real quick. So the ticket information is that uh it's 50 pounds on a weekday, 60 on weekends, so that's okay. fine. But, but you're saying it's per person, right? Per person. Yeah. So you can so there are different ways to book. You join a team with individual tickets or you book a team oh, an entire team yeah, so. eight so that the cap at eight. Or you book a whole session of 32. And I guess that's sort of like where you go with like... But basically book out the entire thing. Yeah, place. and then you take it like one one, one game at a time, oh, I No, I guess they're doing the same thing, which is they yeah. all break into 40s yeah, 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 and yeah, do yeah. different zones. But yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 50 pounds though, huh? 50 pounds. It's worth it. We probably yeah, do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, it's because it's the kind of thing you do once. I mean, like you're not going to go... You're not going to go back anytime soon. It's sort of like an amusement park. You know, you yeah. treat it as like, it's, you make a day out of it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Oh, that's cool though, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Wait, so, I want to get back to uh, dear friend, Mr. O'Brien. So, his um, what filmography... What is his, his, in, uh, his filmography? Yeah. Yes, his career, so to speak. His career spans some pretty interesting uh, mentions. So, the biggest one probably is that he was uh, very heavily involved with... The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, right. In yes, 1975. You did, you did mention so this. This is like 20 years prior to Crystal No Maze wonder itself. he is so camp. Right? Yeah. Um, he was also in Flash Gordon. What? Yeah. Are he you was, saying? He was Fico. Oh, oh my Fico. gosh. I don't know how to say that. That's so cool. I'm sure this guy <clears throat> knows it. Uh, Chris from IGN. He's he was, the biggest Flash Gordon fan I know. <laughs> he was in uh, Robin of Sherwood. Okay. So he's in a Robin Hood. Who was he? Who he was he? Was Let me guess. Gul- uh, Sheriff of Notts Lane. No. no. I've never. Gulna? Gulna? I haven't seen the movie, so okay. I don't really know who that is. Uh, did you ever see the Carry On series? No. So there, it was Wait, an old. I? It was this old 1960s, 1950s uh, comedy. Not sketch comedy, but like a sort of Mon- Monty Python. No, not even Monty Python. But like but a. Quintessentially British. Yeah, very quintessentially British thing. It was called yeah. Carry On series. So they were like. Maybe ten or more movies. I don't know. There were there were a lot of them. There were a lot of movies that just went carry on something, and so is it like the Ernest series? Yes, think of it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. like big ensemble casts. Okay, and just like slapstick, classic British kind of comedy. So he was on Carry On Cowboy. That was his first movie, which he got because he was a stunt man. No, he could totally be. He so was quite fit, man. Running got, all over so the place. He actually got that gig because he was a stunt man on a horse for something or the other, and wow. so he was like, "Hey, we need you to." Do stupid stuff on a horse in this Carry On movie, so he got to that. Uh, Richard Ryan is great, though. Yeah. He was quite a legend, man. Like uh, he really did make that show. So we're gonna take a short break, and then we're gonna talk about Legends of the Hidden Temple, and then we're gonna talk about some other O'Briens which were featured in India in other shows. Derek O'Brien, <laughs> BQC. So we're gonna be back after a short break. Finding the right drink at the right place can be a big challenge. Exploring a new destination to its fullest could be a daunting task. So tune in every Friday and listen to the Drinks and Destinations podcast with Rajita and Samira who introduce you to the world of fine wines, beer, spirits and travel. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Audioboom or any other local podcast app. Hello again again. And we're back at the Crystal Maze. <laughs> I want to I wanna read off just two more things okay. because this guy's. Like I said, his... Um, Richard O'Brien? Yeah, his filmography okay, cool. is just bizarre. Amazing, yeah. What a eclectic From selection. 07 to 2015, so still very much active. What? Um, he's been doing something that we don't know about? Absolutely. What? He, so, he's been a voice on Phineas and Ferb. What? He's that Lawrence is, Fletcher. That is he's crazy. The dad oh my on gosh. Phineas and Ferb. He is currently... I need to look this up. I need to see I what show this is. He's, to, he's a presenter. Like... Currently, like it says, 2015 till present day, uh, on the DNA detectives. 
No idea. Whatever that is, I no have no idea. clue. Never even sounds heard of like it. the it sounds like the NCIS of a CSI type show in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> NC UK. I don't know whatever, but um, yeah, he's still freaking going, and he's seventy four years old. Oh my god, he must be. I guess yeah? he must be in his forties when he did. Actually, he could have been his thirties. He's quite youthful, you know. He like that's youthful. the thing. Yeah, yeah, jumping around like a monkey. Oh man. Um, okay, so this is off of his Wikipedia page. So I question the you know. Accuracy of all this, yeah. but this is a pretty interesting um, little tidbit from his personal life section. In a 2009 interview, he spoke about an ongoing struggle to reconcile cultural gender roles and described himself as being transgender or a possible third sex. Are you serious? He stated, "There is a continuum between male and female. Some are hardwired one way or another. I'm in between." He expounded on this in a 2013 interview where he talked about using estrogen for the previous decade. And that what? he views himself as seventy percent male, thirty percent female. Wow, Mumsy's gonna be upset, damn. Right? Yeah. Well, so I mean, like I said, this is on Wikipedia, so I don't know how but true or not this is. But I mean, damn. Let's think about it. The Rocky Horror Show is not like the straightest thing. This is, I've this ever is not seen. surprising. Yeah, it's not surprising, surprising to me. It's yeah. quite androgynous. I mean, um. He was androgynous even on the show. Like, even on Crystal Maze, he's pretty androgynous. Like yeah, the, he, he was quite camp. Yeah, like he's, he had he's, those, like, yeah. leopard... Leopard fur, print, furry print stuff. And, like, leather... I mean, just stereotyping. Was this actually a, a, a true fact that, you know... I, I don't know. I mean, like... I'm, like, I guess the... No, yeah, the, I'm saying... Not all people that wear leopard print exactly, and leather not saying pants that, are... But let's leave it at, we are not surprised. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm not, not, not even not, the not least surprised. Bit surprised. Yeah. Okay, cool. But he's but still he, going, he's man. A, he's a he's killer, man. That he guy is so still cool. going... This guy is really something. So basically, I now know that I need to look up... What was that show called again? The DNA, DNA Detectives. Detectives. Yeah, we need yeah. to delve into that for another episode. All right. Moving swiftly into the other show. Um, Legends of the Legends Hidden of Temple. Legends of these magnificent temples. Um, Not as cool as the Crystal Maze, I gotta say. I mean, like... Uh, mm, a I, different I, I, kind of cool. It's a different thing. It totally was a different, different show. Cool. Yeah. Totally different kind of cool. And I, it was primarily aimed at kids... Um, oh yes Yeah so I mean It was all about kids <laughs> yeah. And it's all about And just you know Even when Kirk Falk Kind of started the show He was not like He was not a Captivating host In that sense Like where no. he was not like <clears throat> Crazy You know He didn't He was didn't have a Character character He was yeah. just a dude yeah. Who knew all about The Hidden Temple Like old Mac Always upstaged him The freaking wall Yeah The talking the, the wall The old Mac was amazing Was far more Engaging than this guy But, but I think He that, got better over but that's, time No he, he did, got better He does get better over time I will I will admit to that But th- this is the thing though I think he had to play it Kind of uh, You know Straight edge Because old Mac Was already like You know A weird thing in the show You can't have But I guess Richard Ryan Kind of did it though right? What do you, you mean know, what do Like you mean? he, he he was already in a weird place mm-hmm. and he, there was no co-host as such apart from like Mumsy being Yeah, there. it doesn't really count. But like, yeah. it doesn't really count. But like, so Richard Bryan kind of had to be the like spirit of the crystal maze, right? Like he had to be that. But in this, in Lessons, like, Kirk doesn't have to do much. Like he has to explain the rules. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And all the really cool mystery and yeah. you know, all the stuff is given the by actual, The plot of yeah. every episode, yeah, it comes so, from Omac. So, yeah. so just explain to to people, if you haven't seen Legends of the Temple, yeah. what is Omac? I'm, one, I'm amazed that you, if you haven't seen it, but if you haven't, it's yeah. Yeah, just basically this guy, Kirk Fogg, who dresses up like your typical uh, white guy in an African safari. Yeah, Shikari with, Shambu. With, yeah, with basically the, like how our producers and Dan dresses. Almost identical. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah, with, that. with the, with the you know, ankle length socks and the boots and yeah, the yeah. short shorts. Not short shorts, but shorts. <laughs> shorts. Shorts, just shorts. Cargo yeah. shorts. Uh, denim. Yeah, cargo. It's all about cargo. All about the cargo, the denim jacket and the yeah. heat. On occasion, he had the... Uh, the freaking the ascot, yeah, like yeah, Fred. The ascot, yeah, Fred, Fred's ascot, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, so it's just this guy who leads these uh, teams of kids that are like um, duos. Yeah. Um, and there were how many teams were there? There were there were six in the beginning. Who we'll start with six? And teams. then one got added. I uh, no, no, they were oh, as in in the beginning, as in no, they would yeah, start no, the show yeah, with yeah, six teams. Yeah, you yeah. start the show with six yeah. teams, and then um, you. Go through a bunch of physical challenges, and you have the a couple. The first challenge of, is the is a, is a is, physical challenge. The first always. one is the physical yeah. one of crossing a moat. So you just you cross this little moat thing, yeah. and then and then by it's that a mental you challenge. Start, you start eliminating it a team or two, yeah. and then yeah, you get to the mental challenge where in which which is not as important. Wall, it's not as important. It's like uh, it's like quota, you know, like basically. <laughs> Yeah, there's no It's like <laughs> reserved seat. <laughs> it doesn't begin, you, you yeah. need to get your you need to like earn oh, your seat. Good. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So continue. then <laughs> at which point so once you cross this moat of dread, the the talking wall, the scary talking wall. He's will, not supposed to be scary though, is he? He's like um He's pretty intense. 
He's intense, but he, he's, not, he's not scary he's per se. A, but I mean, a, if, if a, the walls start talking to me, I, I would is not. Is Olmec supposed to be yeah. your friend or as a guide or is just he is, a yeah, mysterious? He's supposed, to, he's supposed to be the Yoda of the show. Oh yeah, because he knows all and he's like there to tell yeah, you how to he, get around stuff. Is he? And, but he's also like, oh, if you're not worthy. You're screwed. Yeah, you you don't deserve oh, to be much, in the temple. Yeah. You so, yeah. you're not gonna get those prizes. Here's one thing. Wait. Yeah. So when you prizes? watch it, when you watch on TV, did they show you what the prizes were? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. This is one thing that really annoyed me about the show. Yeah. Because obviously, as a kid, I watched that show like every week or every day whenever it came on. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, I wish I could be in this thing. <laughs> Why can't I apply to be on the show? Why do I have to live eight thousand <laughs> miles away? Um, and then every time that they would say, and here's what they could win, cut. And I'm like, well, but I oh, what, really? They, and then you know. So then I looked up what they won. Uh, they, it was a bunch of cool like a, stuff. You'd win like a but skateboard. It was, it was silly You'd also. win like a... Uh, but you know, I, it's, for kids, know. it was awesome. So funny. I, I was I re-watching guess. an episode like, again, when, when we said we were doing this uh, uh-huh. show. I was just like watching it and they showed all these kids things and I was just like, nerds! Oh my God, they're selling nerds! Wow, that's awesome! And I was just like, wait, no, you can just buy nerds. Like, yeah. you can just do that. <laughs> and I was just like, oh no. This, this successfully... I, I guess this must have worked extremely well targeted to kids uh, yeah. who were I mean, growing it up worked, watching. So it worked so well that I was... My, like myself and everybody else in school yeah. really wanted to be on the show even though we didn't have a clue what you could win. Just the 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 act of being on the show and taking part was fun. So that is the that is the primary goal. Yeah, Yeah. it should not be in a cool show just to you know win prizes. Even though the Crystal Maze, uh, what did you think of the Crystal Maze prizes? By the way, they were like kind of weird and it was kind of awkward at the end. They were like, okay, so you didn't win all the 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 best prizes because tell me what did I win? Uh, Yeah, Uh, but uh, let me tell you, you've got. A day's vacation in so and so place, and Ooh, I was just like, a day. and everybody was like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I could do so much in a day. <laughs> I could spend my crystal at the mall. Just the other thing. <laughs> How much is the crystal worth? <laughs> Is it more than 50 quid? Because that's how much I spent to be here. That's not true, by the way. Well, maybe not. And, oh, by the way, here's the other thing. Yes. <laughs> None of the contestants knew each I other. None what? of the contestants knew each other. They, they were didn't? picked randomly, yeah. Really? Yep. They were not a team that applied. Oh. There were no teams that applied. And here's why... That would explain the awkwardness. This would also explain why nobody really won the Crystal Maze that often. Do you know, and this is a truth, this is this is fact... Out of the eighty-three teams, how many think actually won the Crystal Maze? Well, how zero. Many, do you, you think one? Nobody won. Uh, <laughs> I said that often. Oh, okay. Out of eighty-three teams, huh. uh, so, you know uh, the number of teams that got a hundred golden foils in the letterbox. Uh, there were only eighteen. Eighteen teams got a hundred, but somebody got all a hundred. I mean, I because yeah. yeah, the way no, that looked like you they would would never get, get no. You could get a hundred, but you would also get the silver foils, which then deducted. Right. So yeah, some yeah, people yeah, get yeah. hundred thirty, hundred oh, okay, okay, uh, okay, but okay. then they would get like sure, thirty sure, silver sure, foils because you can't really like decide. You're just grabbing so shit what, and putting so wait, it. In. So I forget what was the grand prize. So, uh, if you the, win the, uh, I don't know. I didn't. Even, I don't remember watching so many episodes where somebody actually won. But it yeah. would be like a, a really like cool like paid vacation or something like that. I think that's what that's what worked about these shows, man. Like. Like the prize didn't really matter. Like who wants to be a million? Who wants to be a millionaire? Even though it's one of the biggest ones ever. But that, the prize is it's money. all about the money. Yeah. Like nobody cares really too much about the questions. The questions are fun to like see yeah. if you can figure it out faster than the other guy. Yeah. But these shows were just to be on to the be show. On was the show because enough the, the, of a prize. The, yeah, yeah, because the construction of the set itself is so intriguing, yeah. so amazing. Especially as a kid, I can't imagine what it must be like to be on Legends of the Devil. Yeah, it's man. like it's like uh, you know you watch movies, and this is before the era of really good graphics on PlayStation yeah. and immersive. Yeah. You know, this like was software. the closest you get to being Indiana Jones. In a, yeah, Indiana Jones yeah. or being in yeah. a l- actual world yeah. of like you know Aztec. Yeah. But though I gotta say the Legends of the Devil. Historically, was just all over the place, right? Oh yeah, because I mean, they made up random crap every week. No, so it it was they would have a Mayan theme. That was the whole thing. It's this Aztec Mayan whatever theme, but they would like each episode had a had a a a MacGuffin is what they call them, right? Like that's what George Lucas called it. So the the thing that drives the story, and like they would have like stuff from all over the place. The boot of Paul Bunyan. The boot of Paul Bunyan, which is not something in the time of uh, they were never contemporaries. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) so it was just like all over the 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 first episode is is of uh, uh, Edotish. What's his name? Blackbeard. And oh, Blackbeard, no, some Black the Beard finding what? the map of Blackbeard, basically. Ah, right. So I was just like, okay, that never occurred at the same time that the Mayans yeah, were like yeah, yeah, yeah. making the 2012 predictions or anything. <laughs> any, 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 not not any close. In the close middle of that, they were like collecting boots and uh, yeah, of yeah. stuff which was like way ahead of their time. Yeah, yeah. But they have always been way ahead of their time. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah. So, so like we were saying, though, I just want to finish up. So you you do the you do the moat thing. 
you pass that, you don't get kicked out. You then hear Four Olmec. Teams. Yeah. Yeah. You then hear Olmec tell you the story about Paul Bunyan and his mom or whoever and the hell he's talking about. And then it's like, it's basically what you would call an oral comprehension. Yes. It's what you exactly have in what school. It yeah. It's exactly, that's exactly what it was. He would like rattle off like a paragraph's worth about like, this is what happened back in the day. And, yeah. and then he's going to ask you questions. Tell me the thing that happened back in the day. Which I just said oh, 30 seconds ago. I think it was Paul Bunyan who left his boot behind. And he's like, that is right. Please move forward. And then like you pass that test and it's yeah. down to like two teams. Two teams, yeah. And then the two teams do like, uh, how many physical challenges? So they have, to do, they have to do, uh, basically they have to get two pendants. Yes. Two whole pendants. And as many as two whole pendants. Yeah. Yeah. And each uh, task that they would give you, physical challenge that they give you, would right. get half a pendant. Yes. That's, that's and then it's. these pendants, like, are basically lives <laughs> against the dreaded temple guards, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. the temple guards, yeah. Who uh, basically just look like... Um, Native Americans, <laughs> Native Americans and it's really incredibly uh, uh, racist and um, but is it you know, though is it, is it I mean like who yeah. else would you find in a Mayan temple you're not gonna find like uh, uh, a very you know socially conservative well, uh, politically if you find, correct if you're gonna kind find of freaking guy Paul Bunyan's boot Next to the shrine of the silver monkey, yeah, like anything is possible. Well, that's true, like, but you know, it's like a, it's like in that show Community. Mm-hmm. It's like when they had to have a school mascot, they have to do it without finding, without racially offending right. anybody. So they yeah. end up making just this white, like almost like a, it's like a, it's a guy in a white kind of leotard, and his face is covered. And he can't speak because he doesn't want to offend anybody. <laughs> it's like that, you know. It's like where, what else will you do? So they want, I mean. They were Using the Mayans as, as a adventure yeah. mystery kind of thing is cool. Yeah. I guess that way you can just offend anybody, can you? Of course. Yeah. So. It's called 2016. Everybody's offended. Everyone's offended and just yeah. deal with it. Cool. Yeah. So you do that, you pass these physical challenges, then you make it, the lucky the lucky team gets to make it into the temple and then you go on a what, 90 seconds you have? Three minutes. Three, three minutes. Three minutes oh, in right. the temple. Three minutes in the temple. Yeah. So one guy goes in and then he or she goes for as long as it takes to get to the prize yeah. if you get caught by one of these dreaded temple gods you who can, just bear yeah. hug you out of nowhere because that's freaking scary like, yeah and it's a like that's that dude's job yeah like, <laughs> like what do you do for a living I hug kids yeah. they don't know I'm coming but I just and hug I do them. it on national television yep. and I wear close to nothing while yeah, I yeah. do it too no, so here's the thing though uh, yeah. again this is another show where not many kids would win like yeah. and, okay. here's, and this is how awkward it would get okay mm-hmm. just to uh, how the show would end yeah. it's like uh and I, I read up something about this, so I'll just talk about it. But sure. uh, so they would go into the temple. It would be very difficult for them to solve because there's mm-hmm. so many doors, some which yeah, open, yeah, some which don't. Yeah. And here's the thing: if the person is caught enough times, yeah. then only will the second member of the team get to go. Right. But if you run out of time, the second member just doesn't do anything. Right. And, and it it's... just ends with, and most episodes would end with, "Oh, I guess he didn't do it. See you guys See you next, next time." Week. And then like there's a little <laughs> five-year-old next to And one kid like, is just like, "Okay, sad," and just waving to the camera. Box. So this sad. Too so sad. It was very sad. Wait. So, yeah. who was your favorite team? We all had a favorite team. Uh, I want to say uh, I like the Green Monkeys. Okay. Uh, but all the Silver Snakes for the win. Right. Okay. <laughs> so this was. I feel like this was a very contested and heated debate. On school playgrounds you worldwide. You see it on YouTube comments, dude. People are right. still like, you know, red, uh, red, red jaguars. jaguars. Yeah, red yeah, jaguars. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this has like been a lifelong <laughs> since day one. This has been an ongoing debate about who's the best team. So I have who's once, the worst team, also we should say. I will tell you everything. So, um, <laughs> so basically, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give you the facts. Oh, like wow. these are somebody took the time to like do the mathematics amazing, behind this. Amazing. Wait, so play, place your bets. Who's the best and who's the worst? I'm gonna say red jaguars are probably the best. And who's the worst? And the worst blue barracudas. Okay, but your favorite is silver snakes. Yeah, you would like if. Silver Snakes wins, but you think it's the Red Jaguars? I think it's the Red Jaguars. They were okay. mostly the ones which are always there. I All think right. it's just because, right. and which is funny because Red is like the lowest wavelength and looks terrible on camera, especially those bad cameras. So I would say it's in the interest to make the Red Jaguars lose. <laughs> <laughs> With that sound logic in mind, yes. Okay, so they, they had 120 episodes. Yeah, right? three seasons. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. 32 temple runs were completed. I'm not surprised. Right? I'm not surprised at all. The win rate was 26 percent. Wow, of those even, 32. Is, no, that's exactly the same amount as Crystal Maze, by the way. Which, 18 which makes out sense. of 83 is to about two, which r- kinda makes 20%. It, which kind of makes it a good game because yeah. it's hard to beat, but it's yeah. not impossible, right? So like about a quarter of the time, it would get uh, Correct. defeated. Yeah. So the winningest team, now this again, I, like I said, this is Wikipedia. So like this grammar is amazing. Sure. The winningest team. The winningest team. With a 38% success rate. Let me guess. Well, no. you guessed. Well, is it Red Jaguars? No, it's Silver Snakes. What? It is oh, Silver so Snakes. Oh, so good. Right? The second team with 33%, the Green Monkeys. Oh, that's so good for right? me. I love Green Monkeys. And then it was the Purple Parrots. But and why? Then, no, but um, you know why I supported the Green Monkeys like sometimes is because the Green Monkeys would always lose. 
Like they would uh, At least all the episodes That I used to watch The Green Monkeys Would never make it They were like the Kind of the underdogs Which actually should make them The I don't know The purple dogs But uh, uh, underdogs Or whatever it is But like No but the Green Monkeys I don't know why Whenever I watched They never used to win The worst team Yeah Was the Orange Iguanas Of course Actually I didn't even Think about them There you go You know who I, But I Because I, so out okay. of my memory But the Second last Who I just never enjoyed At all Was the Blue Barracudas Yeah I like that color. Because it's a barracuda. I mean, but like, it's, you're awesome. a fish. Like, the, between the fish and the parrot, I'm like, you get oh, a yeah, jaguar, that, you get well, a who's snake. Who's the parrot again? Yellow? The purple parrots. Pop, purple parrots. Yeah. <laughs> yellow parrots. Oh, God. <laughs> yellow jackets. Um, the yellow jackets, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, here's another thing. Like, there's a whole lot of... Somebody's really taken the time to do a lot of, like, stats on this thing. So, the fewer pendants a team had upon entering the temple, the more often they would end up winning. So, if somebody... The, if f- a team the fewer, had, sorry? The, the fewer? fewer pendants you would have... Oh, yeah? The more likely the team, like more often than not, is it that because they're more up, conscientious of that? Like you know, something like I, I, I don't know. Maybe just reckless abandon. I don't know what it is. But basically, um, <laughs> it's kids. It's probably reckless right, abandon. Yeah. Because so with, with those uh, games leading up to the getting into the temple, you would win like half a pendant, right? So you could have either half, one whole, one and a half, and then you could find the extra missing half, right, in the temple. Okay, yeah. So if that's you go true. in, if you go in with one and a half, you can earn that other half if you happen to find it. Here's the other logic, though, with yeah. it is mm-hmm. that maybe so. This, so this is not that kind of game where if you have enough pendants going in, you can go in and take risks. Because if you take risks, you're gonna not think about what you're doing. You're just gonna go for it. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. But you're the not time stopping limit, to like look around. Exactly. And, like, the time limit is so less yeah. that you have to really actually calculate it. I mean, there's no real way of doing it. Yeah. But basically, you want to be a little more cautious about yeah. it. And that's probably why the winning rate is higher yeah. if you have less dependence. But here's another fact. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was watching this interview with Kirk. Okay. And he, he was the, uh, the host of the show. And he's much older now. And yeah, he just looks so much older. It's just crazy. And he was just talking about... And he was so funny. He's just really actually a funny guy. Yeah. And he's talking about how... Uh, the show would take 18, like, like yes, a whole I think I saw day. This interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, to shoot. And so the kids, would, like, the first round would take, you know, like an hour. Because they would do, shoot. they would do, but they'd have episode to do after episode, episode per, Yeah, they would have to do set. at least four, four yeah. episodes a day. So they would have That's to, like, crazy. cycle through, like, what, 40, 50 kids? Exactly. Co- crossing that moat. Here's the thing. And like 20 to keep the over. kids, like, happy and, like, you know, in good spirits, they would, like, feed them, like, pizza and, like, stuff like that. Of course. And so. By the time you reach the temple, these he's like these kids are delirious. They don't know what they're doing. They're high on sugar and stuff like that. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. And so if you can't blame them, that you know. Yeah. And so he was talking about how um, he the one occasion where it was where this one girl. She was already she was losing the plot already, and she was in the hidden temple, and she's a young girl. You know, these girls, you know, these kids are like 10, how, 11. how old were they? About they 10, were about 11? ten or eleven, 10 or 11, right? 11, yeah. I remember because I remember one interview so from the first episode. First episode is where she's like, "Oh, so what do you want to be when you grow up?" Because that's only when they care about he's like after right. you've crossed a few rounds yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like oh so what do you do you have a name <laughs> you, yeah you have earned the right to speak <laughs> to speak <laughs> so basically before that if you don't make it we don't care about you yeah. and so she's like oh yeah I want to be a teacher she's like oh wait how old are you she's like oh 11 years old she's like why do you want to be a teacher she's like oh because I like hanging out with. I mean I think I like spending time with kids I was like, wait, are you talking about people your own age? Yeah, you like <laughs> hang out with your friends? Or, or, yeah, <laughs> yeah. With your friends? Or like, or like even younger. But anyway, so because she said elementary school. Sure. So, which is what she was probably in. But coming back, so uh, so this one girl apparently went and she got trapped in the pit of what? Pit of doom or something like that? <laughs> Not the pit of doom, but the... Uh, the this basically um, the, the one with all the, 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 the colorful plastic balls which you dive in. You know, it's like a, yeah, a yeah, sea yeah, of, yeah. of, of the, all the, that. The something right? pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, sure. and so she fell into that mm-hmm. and because she lost <clears throat> her bearings and all that, so she threw up. Okay? Oh so she threw God. up on the whole oh, thing. And no. imagine throwing up in that thing, yeah, okay, in that space. Yeah. So they had to take a oh, break. Okay, Jesus cut. They cut. Christ. They had to take her out. Uh, clean up the pit Clean up everything Reset yeah. that whole thing yeah. Then get her back Into good spirits Make her happy again Put her back In so the exact same re-edit. spot yeah. put her, And then say Action Go from there And just like That's crazy dude Especially for oh an 11 year old kid So you can imagine What these shows Were actually like they, they must have been Really crazy So I'm not at all surprised That you know Kids First of all Kids couldn't finish The Hidden Temple It's just yeah. like difficult yeah. And Crystal Maze These are adults And if they couldn't finish it Then those are just yeah. You know stupid. But you know So that's So that's kind of what I miss Significantly What I want to What I took away from just like Revisiting these shows uh, The last couple of days Was Obviously you know The kids show of like Hidden Temple is one thing It's great Like there always will be Stuff for kids In terms of game shows Because you can do You know 
you can do so many different things with kids as opposed to adults because adults would like yeah be scared off by that thing something's weird or like yeah. you know are you, saying, want, no, are you saying kids are more willing to do willing like, to do stuff <laughs> yeah because I, i feel like it'd be harder to sell legends of the hidden temple if it wasn't already a thing to yeah. adults like it would need to be the the campy, adult thing is crystal maze the so. campiness the campiness of a head, of hidden temple would have to be like really dialed down because you know i feel like crystal maze at least had a lot of like it had uh, like one it had the production value like i keep talking about but it also like it it looked so legitimate just so freaking cool which hidden temple mm. didn't look cool there's nothing cool it looked about like a, it looked like a kids adventure park that was shot exactly. for exactly 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 it looked very much like a kids thing right Crystal, yeah. crystal maze looked like an adult thing because it was i know and, and they gave it that air have, of like you know yeah we just don't have adult physical game shows like that anymore? anymore yeah other than like your wipeouts which are just played again, based so on pure silliness is takeshi's castle still on no i guess not right? i'm not sure but again takeshi's castle same thing is like wipeout in that it it's, is a, like it's, a, it's a funny game it's a fun funny game funny it's game. like it's stupid it's not it's, uh, it's not done like seriously and which seems like the right time to do it because everything's going so dark everything's and gritty. going gritty yeah. i was like you could do a legit but then i don't think people will be able to take it seriously without feeling like oh we're still actually in a you know so we're just watching a show right. but then when has that ever been a problem i don't know it's very difficult to say i mean so um have you been to the um what is it called the 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 dungeons of london where yeah. they have those no it's uh, in uh, madam tussa yeah just outside it, yeah. it's in madam tussa right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah like, that is scary those, those kind of as things hell. and i was so, you know, like we're talking 14, about 15, so yeah. and there that's not the only one of its kind I and mean, we were basically talking about these kind of things where you walk into a a, a themed room or a themed you know bunch of rooms a yeah, set basically yeah, yeah, yeah. and there are live action people real actors there dressed in costume who may or may not have dialogue or whatever but they basically they come out and they sort of either they scare you or they you interact with them and you just basically walk through this sort of fairy tale land that they create for you right. and that's really cool but all it is is just a simple walk through event and it's fine yeah, yeah. it's it's cool it's like a 5 yeah. minute 10 minute it's thrill Im- it's immersive so it does its, it's job very yeah, immersive, yeah, right? yeah, way, yeah. so i feel like those obviously aren't that many anymore unfortunately you mainly find them at like a disneyland or a major theme park oh, where yeah, you don't where it's yeah. not solely built on just one thing yeah, alone I agree. but i feel like you could you could do something like that um you could do something like that today and and you know shoot it well and televise it and it would be i think it would, be, it would make for a pretty cool show i think yeah people still watch it so i think it would be really cool there were a couple of really cool do. game shows i think in india also so obviously the big one was uh, bqc so mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that sure. we're going to take a short break and then we talk about some of the indian stuff that we had back in india right Did you know that some termites in Africa have a pleasantly minty flavor? Did you know that India's largest music festival was in a way conceptualized in Estonia? Did you know that the awesomest chips in the world are found only inside US prisons? Hello, I'm Chuck. I'm Shrikant. And I'm Narain. And together we are Simplified, Simplified, a podcast that helps you appear smarter to an audience that knows no different. Or give you some stuff to talk about at parties. We are ultra crepidarians. And if you don't know what that means, then tune in to Simplified with a B on iTunes, Audio Boom, or your favorite podcasting app. Episodes out every fortnight. Cool, we're back with the Geek Fruit Podcast. Did you ever watch uh, the Bon Vita quiz course, contest? Religiously. Yeah, it was yeah, a great show. I mean, show. Derek O'Brien, another O'Brien of men of words you know and he he was excellent uh, as a as a quiz master and I, i think and this is the other thing is growing up in dubai i really wanted to be on bqc and there was an actual possibility because i'm indian and i could have done it but i was still really far away and i couldn't have had a chance but i i believe somebody who we really love and respect was on bonira quiz contest who? mr warren mendonsa what Yes, apparently he was so he's a one of the best guitarists in this country and uh, he was apparently he's, he's a big nerd, he's a bit dark. He was on he was, the show? Yes, apparently he was on was on was on uh Bon Vita quiz contest. Have you seen that? I don't know. Okay, this is what his wife uh Uttarata has told me. So, yeah. So that What? <laughs> I thought that was an interesting well, tidbit. Well, I have found my new purpose in life. Dude, what do you think when is like how what? do we find this episode? Yeah, we have to we have to we have to ask him about it. This has yeah. to happen. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean <laughs> Bon Vita quiz contest, amazing show, really, really, really uh, simple format, but like it became such a, I, I guess it became like all things Indian, it became super competitive because it happened between schools, but it still felt like fun enough for it to be like, oh, we're not laughing at the fact that all these kids are going to become engineers someday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was still like, oh, okay, that's fine. It's so true. Yeah, but you know. Do you think, well, do you think that those kids that went onto the show <clears throat> mm-hmm. will... 
became because of being on the show do you think they became the cool kids in class or do you think they got picked on because like man you are such a freaking nerd that you won money off of it at this uh, age they or whatever got you picked won. on until they found out that wow this is a really rewarding this is true yeah profession and they dude so quiz, quiz is huge in india and I, lo- and i love quiz and i'm very bad at it but i still enjoy doing it and i know a couple of my friends uh, this guy debanjan uh, who i studied with in university and he's such a huge quizzer uh that he would literally all his like life even my people like uh, people from my school mm-hmm. and we were really good at it my school particularly was in is in quiz uh they would just go to different events all the time in india like they would keep being you know flown out to to like calcutta to like delhi and stuff for big you know regionals and then finals and so on and so forth and then we used to win it quite often so it was a really big deal and i think quiz is st- i don't know if it's as big a deal anymore in india i'm not sure I'm not sure. It's because we've been out of school for a long time now, so we don't really we're not really up to date with it. But quizzing is like is an awesome thing, and I've, I'm glad it's found its way into like pub quizzes and you know and things like that. So that's something I think we definitely as geek crew also we should like kind of just get back into you know because I, I just quizzing, quizzing is just an general. amazing amazing sport. Yeah, but like I said, I would love nothing more than if we saw the return of a action based. Yeah, physical game, game show, physical game show that was actually that mixed action as well as like mental, you know. There used to be a game called Ek Minute. Solving. I don't know if you saw that Ek Minute. Mm, it no. used to be on uh, again on Star Plus, I guess, and mm. it was just basically like in one minute you have to do different tasks. Every round is a minute. Mm. It was like uh, the the show stage was like uh, the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire kind of ah, like right. circular kind of thing. But yeah, man, I think the good game shows like could know, definitely come you know, back. R- random thought. This show isn't around anymore at least I don't think so right but like uh Fear Factor and Who Dares Wins So Fear Factor is there in India is it, yeah is, With it, it Akshay might Kumar st- it might still be there but yeah. I mean uh wh- what I'm getting at is I feel like those shows Who Dares Wins that was on AX and did you ever watch that mm, I mean yeah again I'm aware of it but yeah, it was, was it was an Australian based show like so it was very much Southeast Asian uh centered but um Fear Factor I guess is the big one um that show mixed you know physical feats obviously yeah. freaking I think that's impossible the physical thing, feats though, man yeah but it was running off the um steam of uh, reality tv yeah it was survivor is also that i guess survivor right? is that but survivor yeah. is, is very much reality it's because like you the live with them legends of the hidden temple survivor in, in survivor you had you like you developed um how do you put it like you got to know the character yeah, there was yeah. there was a plot like you got invested well, I, yeah, and in the def- person right but fear factor, real tv yeah right yeah. so fear factor didn't have that you didn't like invest in the person except for the fact that you were watching them like crying in fear and terror yeah and you were being amused by that yeah. these guys were, like genuinely like eating cockroaches and yeah. you're watching them just like that's true yeah. freaking out as anybody would but There's the promise or, of money or, on the other side. So I mean, so I mean, exactly like The Apprentice. They're one of your favorite shows. The Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah, Celebrity yes. Apprentice. Yeah. And now the Schwartz. The Schwartz, is, man. The is, Schwartz uh, is going to. I'm so excited. Be amazing. Follow him on Snapchat, everybody. I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <clears throat> so yeah, man. I think I think that's the primary difference. Physical game shows are not there anymore, yeah. and they've been replaced by reality programming and games of skill. So like mm-hmm. Master Chef is a huge thing because yeah. you actually. Have, American Idol will American Idol is done. So that's how far along we are in the right. future. The American Idol is is happened and is done. Yep. Yeah, so it's it's quite crazy. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean I mean I'm okay with yeah. it. They didn't really produce any good no. talent. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so questionable. But cool. yeah. Okay, cool. So um I'm going to try and uh think of a few more game shows that we could probably kickstart here in India. I, I want know. I want to know who has the rights to Where in Space is Common San Diego because I feel oh like we could do God, so much with that. That, that is one of my favorite that shows would be, ever. That would be a mix of the amazing race and like a clue hunt kind of a game oh like trying to find Common San Diego. That would be amazing. Game ever. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. Let's move on to equally random stuff. Random news generator. So you want to go first? Do you have any like cool yeah. cool news? So uh, I hope we don't have the same one though. I Okay, go Maybe? go go for know, it. Whatever. Let's just all, let's say it at the same time. All right. One, two, three. <laughs> wow, I would really want to know what, what you have to say. <laughs> what did you What do you have? I have the Exorcist. Okay, go. Wow, that yeah. sounds exactly like the Exorcist. I mean, like in the the first movie. What? Oh, when yes. she's going crazy. <laughs> like that's the ex, 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 Exorcist on like <laughs> the fun <laughs> channel or something. <laughs> Vomit. The Nickelodeon version <clears throat> of Exorcist. Anyway, go for it. Tell me. So this is from uh, Fox. Are you a fan of the Exorcist? Oh yeah, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, not the sequels though. Yeah, not right. so much. Uh, so Fox has revealed five new shows that they've picked up for a series, um, for series plural that'll be coming out in 2016 seventeen television season. So two of them that I'm particularly interested in, which I think a lot of people will be, are The Exorcist 
and Lethal Weapon. What? Right? So I'm just lethal gonna read weapon. Out. So I'm just gonna read out really quick. The um, buddy cop yeah. extravaganza. Yes. Danny Glover and Mel. Yeah. Yeah. So, Which was then recreated in Iron Man 3. Eh? Yeah. What? It's kind of like a buddy cop film. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean Iron Man 2. Uh, three. Three? Yeah. Shane Black, same director. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I just thought you meant like generally like Don Cheadle and the white yeah, guy. Yeah, <laughs> Don, Don Cheadle and, and, and uh, with the other guy, okay. Robert Downey. So The Exorcist is uh, the Exorcist is a reimagination of the classic horror film. The psychological thriller is set more than four decades after the first movie and returns in series format as a propulsive psychological thriller following two very different priests tackling one family's case of horrifying demonic That sounds possession. actually really interesting. I would so, watch that. I would. I'm definitely gonna watch that. Uh, but I, I hope it's as bizarre and gory and weird as the. Here as are the names mm, involved. Who's Gina, involved? Gina Davis, Alfonso Herrera, Ben Daniels, Brianne Howie, and Hannah Kasulka. Don't know. Do any, you know any of these? I know names? the first one. Who's the first one you said? Gina Davis. Yeah, yeah. She's in something. Is she? She plays uh, <laughs> Stuart's little Sabat. Stuart Little's mom across from Hugh Laurie. Really? Is that oh, Gina yeah. Davis? I thought that was... Uh, yes, right? Yeah. Her name is Gina something. I'm pretty sure it's Gina Davis. Okay, great. great so great, yeah, great. so she's there. Um, she must be the bereaving, like the, the mother, I guess. I guess so. So it's... Who's the, the kid? Who's the, who's the messed up kid? It, it doesn't say. It, I, don't uh, know the, I don't know who's playing who. CGI. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jeremy Slater is the scriptwriter. Showrunner? Um, who is the showrunner? It doesn't really say. Okay. Uh, produced by Roland Jim. If Roland it's a Jones, truly, if it's truly an Exorcist film, then the show will run itself. I don't know who this. Huh. Is. It's directed by James Robinson, Barbara Wall, David Robinson, and Rupert Wyatt. That's a lot of people. Yeah. So directing they have a, one thing. A bunch of. I mean, it's not uncommon these days. Six people. Game of Thrones has like a whole. You has know, one s- director each episode. No, 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 no. Yeah, one director, but different directors for oh, episodes. Oh, for episodes. Oh. Yeah, so they could be doing something like that. Okay. You know? So yeah, not like uh, True Detective, which yeah. is all this one guy. Kari Fukunaga Who's actually apparently Who was supposed to be doing Stephen King's It And then that got canned And I was so upset That would have been great Oh yeah 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 Okay real quick Lethal yeah. Weapon Yeah uh, Based on the hit movie By Mel Gibson and Danny Glover In the modern day series Clayne Crawford Plays Martin Riggs And Damon Wayans Oh I like him Is gonna play Roger Martog So they're still playing The Mar- same Martog. characters Yeah Wow So it's like Kostowski and Hutch you know, I modern guess. History, which is the it. reverse actually, because Starsky and Hutch was a TV series and then became yeah, a movie, yeah. and this is a movie becoming a TV series. I think that's happening more and more these days. And then some movies even become musicals on Broadway, mm-hmm. like The Waitress by Sarah Bellas. This is not even like in the Legally gamut Blonde. of geek fruit at all. But okay. let's uh, let's move on. This is definitely uh, something that interests me and mm-hmm. should you as well. Yeah, I love Zara. The new Zara movie Z casts uh, Gael Garcia Bernal as Zara. Who's that? He's the guy who was in all those um, Inirito films. Nope. Uh, e tu mama tambiang. I haven't seen that. Okay. What, really? No. Okay. So he's great. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good actor. And I, I think we've seen him in something very <laughs> recently. I can't uh, put him in my head. Right. But directed by mm-hmm. uh, Jonas Quaron, which is Alfonso Quaron's oh, son, who did the... Nice. Uh, did you ever see the spin-off film uh, To Gravity? No. So I'll just give you a little bit of thing about that. I can't remember the name because it's an Eskimo Inuit kind of name. Okay. And basically what it's about, uh, remember in the movie Gravity when Sandra Bullock is having that radio frequency, like she's basically signaling somebody and she gets in touch with someone and she can't understand what's happening on the other side, but she just continues and she keeps sure. speaking. Yeah. So this is the other side of that conversation. Oh. And it's basically this Inuit who's just like, right. and it's his story and it's really Sad and beautifully done oh, that, that's Amazing And everything that you hear in the movie Actually then starts to make sense Because you, you're you hearing the other side Is of that it. available online? It's online, yeah It okay. was released on Vimeo, I think uh, but Oh, really? Was, yeah, yeah, I think but How it's, long is it? It's like a 10, oh, 12 minute film damn, And it's right. done by Jonas Quaron Very Directed cool. by him He also wrote Gravity with his father So, oh. uh, awesome uh, awesome director And I'm really interested in knowing What they do with Zara Because I think Zara is kind of due uh, yeah. I don't know if you saw the Antonio like Antonio Banderas films in and the, not in years. I saw I mean, it like pff, yeah, it was a nineties well, thing, and then the closest like, yeah, thing yeah. to 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 that was I guess Puss in Boots, which was, <laughs> yeah, which she was born to play. Yeah, yeah so yeah. uh, I, so so I think Zara's due for like a and since Zara's really kind of integral in the whole superhero genre because Zara was kind of an inspiration for Batman, and so in fact that's the movie he's watching. But when mm-hmm. his parents are killed, yeah, yeah. So it, it's a it's a good like it's a great story. Yeah. I don't, there was another. I just, ho- great... I just hope it doesn't go down the path of like the Lone Ranger, which oh, was the Disney one. Yeah, which was that was bad. Yeah. So I mean, Army Hammer, who was supposed to play Batman, actually. I was I was because I mean I'm excited at the notion of like old, you know, heroes 
coming yeah. back you know yeah, like, yeah and this is set in a really really good time you yeah, know yeah just it, like it, it's it's period pieces of yeah. like superheroes back then like that's kind of cool that's really it's kind of like a robin hood tale yeah, yeah zoro is great and he's a and i think they could take this one not like they can make it ra- realistic and not be one of those things which they're making everything realistic and gritty but it, because it was set in a time which was you know kind of desperate times of uh you know california during the you know spanish scene going on over there yeah. but yeah i think it would be really really good the character is great because he's very bruce wayne like yeah uh in fact bruce wayne is based on that what's his so, real name uh don diego de la vega uh-huh. <laughs> wow can't believe i remember that okay cool <laughs> so yeah actually why i love zora is also cuz there was a great fox kids uh cartoon the same time uh, x men 90s x men oh, happened yeah? so it was a great zoro cartoon that used to happen and it was <laughs> really really good and it had this element of very very batman he had a lot of gadgets because he has his mute butler also uh <laughs> what's his name bernardo i think and he has bernardo uh, uh and yeah it's just great story and so i think and good director cool. good cast should be great very cool so really excited about that so anywho that's it that's, that's all for that's today's us. episode yeah. uh we shall be visiting the crystal maze next year yeah. when we go for star wars celebration right because of course yeah wouldn't you So our celebration is in Orlando though it's not in London. This year is in London next year is Orlando. Great. We'll go to Disney World too. Yeah. Oh, well, amazing. Sounds awesome. great. Wow. So we're just going to fund all of it, right? I uh, and IVM together. Yeah. With their powers combined, They we will. are going on a holiday. On a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Anywho, so That's if, all if you like stuff that we talk about, um get a hold of us at uh, contactgeekfruit@gmail.com, send us all thoughts, comments, questions, concerns and Yeah, and most importantly visit the website. uh which is uh, got a lot more content on it these days we have a ne- no editorial section which is basically where we get people to write like long pieces to for you guys to read which is all nerdy and geeky and stuff and uh, if you want to be a contributor please mail us yeah. and we'll see if you're good at english <laughs> <laughs> that is that's that is that's, about the only requirement crucial. like <laughs> relative fluency <you laughs> yeah know? it's really important um, um find us on yeah, social media find us on social media if you want to like you know get a dose of geek stuff Stop daily Dishnu. on the daily Um, at geek fruit hq on all the things that are social and yeah. media related and yeah most importantly find our podcast on savan actually this is how you're hearing it so really this is good job regardless. you've already won that round yeah now go to the other stuff <laughs> cool yeah, all nerds. right we'll see you guys next week Geek Fruit is an IVM production and if you happen to like our show then you're probably going to like the Podcast, a Bombay-based food and culture podcast hosted by The Daily Pow. So if you want to check out cool stuff in Bombay, you know where to listen. Hey man, just help me out man. I need some I need some podcast man. I haven't had a fix in a week. Just need some. Don't you worry about it. I got podcast galore for you man. Just go to ivmpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks man. I'm going to check it out.